Welcome back to our forever home, everybody. We have two things to show you today, one of which is drooling on my shoulder right now. <laughs> this is our new baby boy. Ah, his name is Lucian, which means light. So you can kind of tell we got a little thing for light. And our lighting system in this house comes from Kitchler which is a company that makes all kinds of different lighting, you'll see that we were able to do some pretty amazing things. And the first thing to understand when you're designing lights, which by the way, we have a full half an hour video on design basics, is that today you're able to do things with lights, especially because of the new kinds of lights that they never would have imagined at the beginning of lighting design. Chandeliers were based on just needing to have more candles in the middle of a room when you owned a castle. A designer is now starting with a blank sheet of paper. When we started this and we were talking with Jeff about the lights and he said, start working in layers. And we literally thought, oh, that's going to be too much light. Are you sure we need to do that? And you sure we need to do that? And now that we have done it, I feel like what were we ever thinking? We could not have done without it. Yeah. All this stuff, as far as the science of homes goes, is based in calculations. You've got foot candle calculations. And again, in that half an hour design video, we go into that kind of in depth. But here is the result of all the calculations and the math and the science in real life, which I think you're gonna enjoy. So we'll start outside. Our rear deck is where we like to spend a lot of time. It's our one outdoor space. It's not completely done yet. It'll be screened in hopefully someday mm -hmm. soon. But we have some nice up and down lighting with these fixtures that are out there, which just really creates a really lovely atmosphere in the evening. And these sconces being close to the wall and kind of spraying light up and down are really interesting when you get a surface that they're mounted on that actually has a texture on it. So our siding, the, the nice thermary wood siding, gives it kind of interesting shadow plays at night, which we really like those. We used those same exact fixtures in the living room, which we'll show you in a few minutes. On the front stoop, we also had to have a lighting option, but we wanted it to be kind of like a beacon and also would light fully our front stoop there. Our front stoop will probably transition and change as we grow in the house. We do have some designs for lighting outside in the trees and kind of in the pathways, but we haven't done that yet because if you've been paying attention to our channel, you've also been seeing that there's a permaculture plan that is coming to our land and our land is pretty big. So it's going to be a process and we'll get there as we evolve. So when we move into the front hallway, we've got a couple of things. One is these down lights that run down the center of the hallway. Those are on a dimmer. Like we said, you want to have at least one thing that can dim. We also have these two mudrooms that each have their own hidden recessed light. And we didn't use recessed cans in this house. Recessed cans are very bad for air tightness and insulation. What you have nowadays is LED puck lights, which look like yeah. recessed cans. They're very, very small. They, they have a very low profile, and they just basically plug right into the junction box. Okay. Little electrician. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tara, I'm going to do their ass. The lights that we have in the front hall, too, also have this wonderful interior gold. And I love the reflective aspect of it. I love the warmth of it. So with color temperature, we really wanted to do something that would be a pure white. You can go like to a cool white or a warm white, but we really wanted something kind of just in the middle. That's 3000 K, which by the way, when you start messing with the color temperatures, be careful that you don't pick one that is impossible to find light bulbs in. So 2700, 3000 are the two main ones. When we move out of the front hallway there with the laundry room and everything built in there, we can go into the studio. It was designed to be a multi-purpose space. So it is our dance and music studio. And it's also our training space. So the lighting in there is really dynamic. It's just our style and we really love it. it this is the room that was the most exciting to me from the lighting perspective. The, the, I, I was just like, oh my gosh, do you think that we could actually like make this work to, to put these things in there? And yeah, I, I mean, I'm so happy that we picked those. Yeah, plus the height in the room just is such a cool place so that when you walk in and you see those big orbs, it feels right. 
I, I especially like about those that you can position them in different ways so that each of those orbs is a different configuration. And also when you get the fans moving on high when we have a dance party, the orbs start moving a little bit, which casts these weird shadows on the wall and the whole thing, it's, I, I just like everything about those lights just drives me nuts. And one more thing about the orbs, just like we've got the reflective gold in some of our fixtures, in there with the orbs, they're this highly reflective silver. So you can take those orbs down to the lowest setting and they still reflect off themselves and it's super neat. In the bathroom, we went with kind of a standard uh, beacon type lighting. That room is black, so we wanted to make sure that we had enough light in there for the people who were gonna be using it and not feeling like they were closed in. And I think it really works, it feels very, roomy even though it's a six and a half foot ceiling translucent doors can be really useful and we use those throughout the house to just make sure that light in one space can kind of bleed into the next space and again create those layers so when you go upstairs we wanted clean clear and whimsy so you've got really great clear lighting up the stairs we have a nice pendant light right at the top and then in the girls bathroom we've got that nice front lighting but then we've got the whimsy of the bubble chandelier which i adore in each of the bedrooms we decided to keep it really clean so we've got some of those pucks illuminating everything and when you go out to the porches we have those really beautiful down lights with the black hood and the gold interior which we also have over the entrance into the studio. Let me just say that spacing those LEDs in the four corners of the room, like Jeff said, we needed to find the corners of a space, was kind of difficult because I wanted them to shine so that they cast a light at four equidistant points inside the space. And so those were really, I needed that my laser to be able to locate exactly where the electrician should put those boxes. I think the master bedroom is this really interesting blend of modern and antique because we have this big, beautiful mirror that belonged to my grandparents, and we have this modern chandelier with these old globes. It really turned out nicely. Plus, all of the LED lights that we have on dimmers give us this really peaceful vibe, even late at night, which I'm having a lot of late nights. The nightlight tape underneath the countertop was something that turned out to be very important. We thought about just kind of getting rid of that, but Jeff really stuck to his guns and said, you trust me, you're gonna need that. And he was 100% right. The other showstopper that we have in our bedroom are the lights over the bed. And these are basically like your reading lights, but they can be fully illuminated or come down really low again. The ability to dim from super high to super low on these lights is just awesome. By the way, dimmer switches, often when you take off the, the cover plate, have a little adjustment that adjusts what the lowest low is. So make sure that you've played with that and set it exactly where you want because that, that kind of adds a layer of customization. So when we come back out to the last space, the living room and the kitchen. Living room was fairly simple because when you look at the foot candle charts, a living room is supposed to be kind of dim and also you might opt for more lamps and things that you could turn on and off at different points in the room. So we went with the exact same uh, fixtures that we have on the back deck here, the up and down light. And let me just say that you should be careful about putting a light that casts light along a surface too close to that surface. We have spent a fair amount of time trying to fix this drywall out here so that it doesn't look bumpy because when you cast a light right next to the drywall, it turns out that you will see every last imperfection. And we found that out in our bedroom, which we never suspected, before we put this baby light in and turned it on and I just about laughed um, because we did not pay for a level five drywall job. Which we, we didn't even know existed, you but have to ask these things. you have to ask these things. So regardless, it's fine in here. We've got this tuned and it, and it looks great. We also have this beam that one of our uh, friends says really ties the room together. We have the tape light embedded on this thing so that it illuminates the ceiling. Those run on 24 volts or 12 volts, which means that you can't just have a normal dimmer and then run it to these LEDs. You need to have actually a transformer in line. You can't do three-way switches with a transformer built in at the dimmer. Uh, a lot of these where it's just one switch that turns on the light, the transformer is actually built into the dimmer. So that makes it really space efficient. And then of course, we've got all the beautiful 
uh, pendants and chandeliers in this room. And the amount of layers in the kitchen is pretty astounding. And again, the kitchen is really my room. I am in there. I love it. I love cooking. But uh, when we put in the lights, I thought, gosh, Corey, but this is too much. We don't need all of this. I have used every combination of light already. And we haven't even had parties. We haven't even done a ton of things. And I love it. I love having those options. And remember that the LEDs don't add heat to our space. Because if you start turning on a bunch of lights around here, and when we're making videos and doing filmmaking, we also use LED lights because otherwise we would be sweating like crazy here. That's yeah. what they used to do in the old days. That's why everybody had so much pancake powder on their face. So the fact that we can turn on lights and not be messing with the heating and cooling requirements of the house, it becomes very important. To save some money on the electrical side of things, we decided that I would install all of the electrical fixtures. It's really not that hard. I will say that the one thing that really gave me a pain in the, uh, in the shoulder was trying to hold up some of these heavier fixtures. I don't know why we don't do this with every light fixture in the world, but see these support straps? What I have been doing is building up my shoulder muscles by, like crazy by holding this entire thing and then wiring it with one hand. It seems crazy to me that the um, ground wire, which is this, is supposed to support the entire weight of all light fixtures. Anyway, I love this. This is a good feature. We decided to save some money up front on dimmer switches because each dimmer switch costs about 35 bucks um, and then you're paying for the install for the electrician to do it. And so those are the kinds of things that a homeowner can do later. And I think that if you're just trying to cut numbers off of your budget at first, you can always install dimmers later. I will say that for the few things that we did not have dimmers on that now I have installed them on, oh, this makes so much difference. Yeah, it's a funny thing because you think, oh, I don't need that to dim and this will be fine. But then you just forget about the stress of life. You forget about the change of light throughout the seasons. Our girls now are getting us up at 6.30 in the morning, and it is pitch black when you wake up at that time so that we can take them to school, of course. And turning on a light that is not dimmed at 6 o'clock in the morning feels like a heart attack to me. So, <laughs> I, so the fact that we've got dimmed, I turn them all the way down on the very lowest just to be like, okay, it's okay, I'm still human, it's fine. So I, I would say have at least a dimmer option in each room mm -hmm. so that you've got the option if you get up in the middle of the night. Do we have any regrets? We might have paid for a higher level of drywall perfection if we had been offered that, which we were not, and a lot of people will not be offered that because it takes time and often a company won't want to spend that much time on something. And frankly, you wouldn't even have to do it with your entire home if you knew on this wall we're having these really beautiful special lights that are going to cast the beams up and down the wall. That's where you want to put the extra money to have that level five drywall. Right. The other thing that I'd say is that the LED tape, the connectors are not foolproof. And if you're like me and you're a little bit clumsy with the install, um, I've ha gotten to the point where I'm having to solder some of these and the, the thing is like this big. And so trying to put a little tiny dab of solder that a wire actually will connect to is pretty difficult because if you make the blob too big, then it'll short the whole thing out. So be careful about your components because they're very small and they're very, you know, they're plastic. They're made to be inexpensive, but that also means that they're not super hardcore. And soldering doesn't happen with all of the fixtures. That's specific to the LED tape. And it's only when you make mistakes like I have done. So that is the exploration of all the lights that go into our home. We hope that you'll stay tuned to our channel to watch the appliance video, which is coming next. That's the next big one. We also hope that you will come and consider uh, training with us in our training space. Check out the online resources that we've got at homediagnosis.tv and at Building Performance Workshop. Join our Patreon club if you want to be more part of the in-depth, behind-the-scenes stuff. And come see the house for yourself if you want. You can come and stay in our tiny lab now and explore some of these things that we've done in real life. So comment, like, subscribe, and tune in next time.